Hello, hello, and welcome on in to another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders, again featuring social distancing. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. I don't know where tell that direction go. I'm confused with these damn things. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's this way, apparently. And he's yeah. It's this way. Yeah, yeah. You got to go opposite of what you think you should. It's really fun. Yeah, it's good. That's how you die in airplanes going upside down. It's great. <laughs> We are once again talking about Woodenville whiskey. Uh, today we have a single barrel. This is a triple barrel select that was finished in an Ardbeg cask. Mm -hmm. And two of us are very happy to be drinking it today. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Yes, you should be very excited. Here, I'm not. Show the people the cool thing to the camera. The cool thing to the camera. Yeah, that. See, that's cool. See, triple barrel. Uh, and then on the back, I'll show you a picture of it because uh, I don't think this is going to... Yeah, just zoom in very well, but uh, this is finished in Ardbeg casks. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Okay. Woodenville Bourbon Mash Triple Barrel Blended Whiskey Finished in Ardbeg Isla Scotch Barrels. Is that long enough for you? That's a mouthful. That's a bit of a mouthful. Like, I'm not saying yeah. that again. All right. So this is their 10-year anniversary distillery-only bottling. It's 91 proof. It's $70. It starts with the mash, the same mash bowl, the 72 corn, 22 rye, 6% malted barley. It's then aged in a new, heavy, toasted, light charred American oak, and it's rebarreled into a used bourbon barrel, and then finished in a third barrel, which is an Ardbeg Isla Scotch barrel. And this is a donation from our lovely friend Joseph Brazos. And also check out Brazos Orthodontics because he's an awesome orthodontics. And unfortunately, with the lovely COVID, not working at the moment. So if you do, up in the Washington area, go check out Joseph Brace of Orthodontics Clinic. All right, so let's get into this thing and see what we think of this beautiful thing that we're very excited about. We will link the uh, we'll link the video with the Woodenville original bourbon at the yes. end of this. Uh, it'll tell you a little bit of the history of Woodenville. Definitely. Whoo! I get smoke on the nose. Yeah, right I mean we're still playing in bourbon territory, but this is definitely finished. Yeah, I don't get the peat on the on the nose either. I get smoke. Mm -hmm. And I'm still getting a high rye spice. I'm still getting that dill note uh, mm -hmm. that I did with the original Woodenville bourbon. I get the brown sugar and the normal baking spices as well. Mm -hmm. But the smoke is overpowering. Yeah, to me, the smoke is just kind of a light thread through it. Um, yeah. I definitely can smell the smoke, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't feel like it's overpowering to my senses. I don't know. What did somebody call me in? Human smoke detector. Yeah, that's yeah, it's true. So I get like caramel, smoke, um, some spices, smoked fish, burning embers, little green peppers, some uh, mozzarella cheese, just a smoked corn with salt and pepper, and some vanilla splashed on it. I'm not picking up my typical um, Ardbeg meatiness. I'm not picking no. up that or bacon. I'm not. I'm not getting any of those uh, umami tones that I typically find in mm -hmm. Ardbeg. Okay, so the longer it sits out and it sits here and, and has been open, I get more peat no. than the last time I went out. No. It's not that strong. It's it's not as if I was sniffing a pour of Ardbeg strike. It's yeah. it's just hidden back there right now. Yep. Matt, what's the ABV on this guy? Oh, I 90, 91 proof. 91. 91. Proof. I think it's uh, it smells wonderful. But it's not like your scotchy notes you'd expect. It's just the smoky notes from the scotch that accents the bourbon. Yeah, this this still to me smells like a, a pretty bourbon forward whiskey. Mm -hmm. I'm still not thrilled. I know it's coming. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> hmm. oh. Oh, eh. <laughs> so oh, good. The no, the peat uh, definitely shows up on the palate. The peat is right around the palate. First thing that hits your tongue, mm -hmm. and it's horrible. <laughs> it's wonderful. I, I think it's lovely. Uh, again, oh. though, this is not um, oh. my typical Ardbeg, uh, Ardbeg peat notes. Uh, I'm actually getting more of the Lafroy out of this. I'm getting more of the medicinal, yeah. more of the tire, more of the the rubber aspect, like a, uh, somebody just did a, a peel out in front of me and I'm smelling that burning rubber. I'm actually kind of totally. getting that kind of flavor in my mouth. Yeah. Okay, so that peat is, buddy. it's Stop. wonderful. If you like peat, you're going to love this. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you enjoy peat, it's great wow. for you. If That's you don't, awesome. just stick to the regular bourbon. 
So this is definitely Pete Forward. Lots of smoke. Now you get your more art, your like I said, your Arbeg Lafroy type combo. Smoke meats, your wood burning, hot coals in the campfire, sweet melted hot caramel with vanilla ice cream. So, oh, you know what it is? It's a cigar smoked ice cream we had at the Highland Park dinner. That's exactly what it tastes like. Ooh. I and that, that vanilla bean, that, yeah, that, definitely a little bit of cinnamon on the finish. That is delicious. Here, oh my god, that is so. You're awesome. adding water to yours, so you can compare it with my non-water one. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, this might take this even maybe better than the Jay Riddle to be honest, and I like that a lot too. This actually, I think I like a little better. This, I, I think I do as well, Matt. This is one of my favorite peated bourbons I've had so far. So we'll have to. And, and now the mash bill on this is not a heated. This is not a smoked malt mash bill. This is just not a finish. But which is amazing uh, if they had, if you had put some smoked barley, some peated barley in this. Holy crap! Would that be interesting? Do another one with like instead of doing just do six percent malted barley, but do it with peat instead. Mm. Ooh. What the water do to it for you? Mm. The water actually kind of subsides down some of the smoke notes. It subsides down some of the rubber notes. They're still absolutely there, yeah. uh, but they definitely tamp down with a drop of water. So if it is a little bit too overpowering for you, uh, that would be the way to do it. I'm going to try, but I don't think she's going to take it. Oh. It's still just smoke on the nose. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But most of the iodine, most of the tire went away with the drop of water. No, it didn't. It really, it really didn't. But. See, for me, especially as you sit here and let the finish go on it, it's got this, really does have this burnt tire licking the charcoals of often. I have some. Okay. This is wonderful. Yeah. He did us proud. This is awesome. Thank you so, very much. We're going to go ahead and, and put this against the original. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys are going to put this against the original Jesus regular bourbon. And I'm just going to drink the bourbon. Oh, my gosh. This is pure vanilla extract now compared in the nose. Yeah. Plus that uh, mm. slight bit of uh, that pine note. Yeah. But, yes, it's very, very sweet smelling in comparison to the other. It's after having that on my palate and trying to wash it away with water, this tastes like creme brulee. Yeah, that's pretty darn, yeah. Creme brulee is pretty much exactly what it tastes like afterwards. It's got it the the texture of it and everything as it Ooh. as it um flows through my mouth. It's it's viscous Ooh. and coating in my mouth, but it's almost like you're taking that smooth creme brulee and it's sliding through your mouth. Mm -hmm. Like the texture like, of flan. Like the full effect, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, flan. Mm. Mm, that's... Obviously, I prefer the original better. <laughs> uh, I, I absolutely prefer the Ardbeg finish. Uh, Ardbeg. I think that's a really, really fun addition to that bourbon. Yeah. That was awesome. It's it's definitely peat forward. It is absolutely like she said, if it's not if you're not mm -hmm. a peat lover. This is not going to be something for you, but this is a distillery only anyway. Anyway, uh, right? So Unless you're this, in Washington or you have friends, you know, it's probably not something most people are going to get their hands on. But uh, these guys are doing fun things, I'm, and I'm excited to see more stuff coming out of that distillery. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, this was awesome. If this is with only ten years, and this is what they've been doing, yes, please. Yeah, please, please make more cool things like this. Yeah, but this is things. exceptional. Yeah, I, really, I really, really love this. I hope they keep on experimenting and doing other fun things. Absolutely. Uh, because this is interesting and unique. Uh, there's not a lot of peated bourbons out there yet. So, yeah. And I think Hennessy, thankfully, you know, has just given them the money to let them explore and do lots of fun things, which is awesome. Because, you know, sometimes you get a buyout and they change everything and it goes down the crapper, but clearly that's not the case. And they're letting them do their thing. And this is awesome. Well, I, I, I really love their bottles. Uh, mm -hmm. The bottles themselves are very, very neat, uh, cool, rectangular shape, uh, lots of fun fiddly bits on both sides. Uh, it's it's not too over, like, wide. Not too square. On, on, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's easy to handle, even with somebody that has small hands. That's my fear about the square, square bottles that you can't really get your hands around good, mm -hmm. but I like it. I like the bottle. Um, I don't like the liquid in this particular bottle, but 
You like I it. like the liquid in in the other bottle. It's got some serious weight to it, this bottle. I mean, because you can see the glass on the bottom of it. I yeah, mean, it's thick. That is. I mean, there's like an inch of freaking glass. Holy yeah. Crap. I like but, it. Yep. Yeah, it's delicious. And it's etched with their uh, with their name on it and things like that. They spent some money on their on their glass. Made in Washington. Let's see, there you go. Yeah. Isn't that cool? And then. Yeah, this this is definitely not a cheap bottle by any means. No. Mm -mm. Nope. All right. Good deal. I like this bourbon. I'm glad you guys like that peated stuff. Delicious. I don't have to drink it. Once again, but thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph, for the donation. The boys love it a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're very excited. Uh, and you know, if they come out with anything that's special and non-peated, I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And until next time, keep on crusading for better whiskey in your glass. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. I like that bourbon. I like it too. It's really good. Yeah.